Hi guys, before we start chapter number 6, let's recall what we studied in chapter number 5. So, we heard about the Vedas and we know that there are four of them. The first one is the Rig Veda, second one is Sama Veda, third one is Yazur Veda and the fourth one is Atharva Veda. And the oldest Veda is the Rig Veda which is composed about 3500 years ago. The Rig Veda includes more than a thousand hymns called Shukta or Well Said. And the three gods are specially important during the Rig Veda time. The first one is Agni, the god of fire, Indra, a warrior god, and Soma, a plant from which a special drink was prepared. These hymns were composed by sages, that is the rishis. The Rig Veda is an is in Old or Vedic Sanskrit, which is different from the Sanskrit we learn today. So let's see about the different families of languages. The first one is the Indo-European. So in this uh, family of languages, uh, we can say that uh, Assamese, Gujarati, Hindi, Kashmiri and Sindhi. They belong to this uh, family of language and also the European languages like English, French, German, Greek, Italian and Spanish. Uh, then we have the tibeto burman family. Uh, in this family, the languages which are spoken in the Northeast, they belong there. And for the Dravidian family, Tamil, Telugu, Kannada and Malayalam. They belong to this family. And for uh, Austro-Asiatic family, the language spoken in Jharkhand and parts of Central India. Uh, and the Rig Veda was recited and heard rather than read. Okay, during the Rig Veda time, uh, we can uh, see horses and cows uh, and uh, in the rig in the hymns of the Rig Veda the rivers that is the Indus and its tributaries and Saraswati are also named in the hymns the Ganga and Yamuna are named only once There are many prayers in the Rig Veda for cattle, children, especially sons, and horses. Horses were yoked to chariots that were used in battles, which were fought to capture cattle. Battles were also fought for land, which was important for pasture and for growing hardy crops that riped quickly, such as barley. Some wealth was used for the performance of yajnas or sacrifices in which offerings were made into the fire. These were meant for gods and goddesses. Offering could include ghee, rain, ghee, grain and in some cases animals. And uh, the leaders are chosen and uh, Often, they are brave and skillful warriors. There are two groups who are described in terms of their work. So the people are described in terms of their work. The first one is the priest, sometimes called Brahmins, who performed various rituals, and the Rajas. Sons did not automatically succeed fathers as rajas, but they were chosen. Two words were used to describe the people or the community as a whole. The first one is jana and second one is vis. Sometimes the people who composed the hymns described themselves as Aryas and called their opponents as Dasas or Dashus. These were people who did not perform sacrifices and probably spoke different languages. 
Later, the term Dasha and the feminine Dasi came to mean slave. Slaves were women and men who were often captured in war. They were treated as the property of their owners who could make them do whatever work they wanted. Uh, these stone boulders are known as megalith, literally big stones. They mean big stones. These were carefully arranged by people and were used to mark burial sites. The practice of erecting megalith began about 3000 years ago and was prevalent throughout the Deccan, South India, in the Northeast and Kashmir. Okay, this type of megalith is known as cyst. Some cyst, like the one shown here, have port holes which could be used as an entrance. All these burials have some common features. Generally, the dead was buried with distinctive pots, which are called black and red ware. Also, uh, found are tools and weapons of iron and sometimes skeletons of horses, horse equipments and ornaments of stone and gold. So in Brahmagiri, one skeleton was buried with 33 gold beads, two stone heads, four copper bangles and one conch shell. Difference in status amongst the people who were buried can be seen. Some were rich while others were poor. Some were chiefs and others were followers. Uh, these indicate that people perhaps belonging to the same family were buried in the same places though not at the same time. The bodies of those who died later were brought into the grave through the portholes. In Amgaon, it is a site on the river Gond, a tributary of Bhima. It was occupied between 3600 and 2700 years ago. Adults were generally buried in the ground, laid out straight with their head towards the north. So this is during the Rig Veda's time. Sometimes burials were within the houses. Vessels that probably contained food and water were placed with the dead. And so how to find out the sex of a skeleton? So the hip or the pelvic area of women is generally larger to enable childbearing. So this is the way the skeleton of a man and women are being differentiated. About, about 2000 years ago, there was a famous physician named Charaka who wrote a book on medicine known as the Charaka Samhita. Uh, there, he states that the human body has 360 bones. This is a much larger number than the 200 bones that are recognized in modern anatomy. So, Charaka arrived at this figure by counting the teeth joints and cartilage so the occupation at an amgaon uh, so they eat seeds of wheat barley rice pulses millets peas and sesame so they must be growing these seeds and they found bones also of cattle buffalo god sheep dog horses ass pig sambhar spotted deer, black buck, antelope, hare and mongoose, besides birds, crocodile, turtle, grape and fish. And they ate fruits also like pear, amla, jamun, dates and a variety of berries. Then uh, in China we find writings on animal bones. There are called oracle bones because they were used to predict the future. 
the fortune tellers they studied the cracks after they burnt the bones in fire cracks they uh, what to say they cracked because of the heat and the fortune tellers studied these cracks and tried to predict the future as they may accept uh, as you may expect they sometimes made mistakes okay they made mistakes also these kings lived in palaces in cities they amassed vast quantities of wealth including large elaborately decorated bronze vessels however they did not know the use of iron so in china about 3500 years ago they did not know the use of iron now let's start chapter number 6 kingdoms kings and and early republic so election day Shankaran woke up to see his grandparents all ready to go and vote. They wanted to be the first to reach the polling booth. Why? Shankaran wanted to know. Where uh where okay, why Shankaran wanted to know? Were they so excited? Somewhat impatient, his father his grandfather explained. We can choose our own rulers today we can choose our own rulers today uh how some men became rulers choosing leaders or rulers by voting is something that has become common during the last 50 years or so how did men become rulers in the past Some of the rajas we read about in chapter 5 were probably chosen by the jana rajas were probably chosen by the jana the people but around 3000 years ago we find some changes taking place in the ways in which rajas were chosen some men now became recognized as rajas by performing very big sacrifices the ashwamedha or the ashwamedha or horse sacrifice was one such ritual A horse was set loose to wander freely and it was guarded by the rajas men if the horse wandered into the kingdoms of other rajas and they stopped it they had to fight if they allowed the horse to pass it meant that they accepted the raja who wanted to perform the sacrifice was stronger than them these rajas were then invited to the sacrifice which was performed by specially trained priests who were rewarded with gifts the raja who organized the sacrifice was recognized as being very powerful and all those who came brought gifts for him The raja was a central figure in these rituals. He often had a special seat, a throne or a tiger skin. His charioteer, who was his companion in the battlefields and witnessed his exploits, chanted tales of his glory. his relatives especially his wives and sons had to perform a variety of minor rituals the other rajas were simply spectators who had to sit and watch the performance of the sacrifice priest performed the rituals including the sprinkling of sacred water on the king 
the ordinary people the ordinary people the vish or vaishya also brought gifts however some people such as those who were regarded as sudras by priest were excluded from many rituals make a list of all those who would be present at the sacrifice which are the categories that are described in terms of their occupation varnas we have many books that were composed in north india especially in the areas drained by the ganga and the yamuna during this period these books are often called later vedic so now let's come to the later vedic age because they were composed after the rig veda uh, after the rig veda about which you learned at chapter 5 these include the sama veda yajur veda and atharva veda as well as other books these were composed by priest and described how rituals and these three of them sama veda yajur veda and athar veda described how rituals were to be performed they also contained rules rules about society there were several different groups in society at this time priest and warriors farmers herders traders crafts persons laborers fishing folk and forest people some priest and warriors were rich as well as were some farmers and traders others including many herders crafts persons laborers fishing folk and hunters and gatherers were poor the priest divided people into four groups the priest divided people into four groups called varnas according to them each varna according to them each varna had a different set of functions the first varna was that of brahmin Brahmins were expected to study and teach the Vedas, perform sacrifices and receive gifts. In the second place were the rulers, also known as Kshatriyas. They were expected to fight battles and protect people. Third were the Vish or the Vaishyas. They were expected to be farmers, herders and traders. Both the Kshatriyas and the Vaishyas could perform sacrifices. The last were the Sudras. Who had to serve the other three groups and could not perform any rituals. Often women were also grouped. women were also grouped with the sudras both women and sudras were not allowed to study the vedas the priest also said that these groups were decided on the basis of birth on the basis of birth for example if one's father father and mother were brahmins one would automatically become a brahmin and so on later they classified some people as untouchable these include some crafts persons hunters and gatherers as well as people who helped perform burials 
and cremations. The priest said that contact with these groups was polluting. Many people did not accept the system of Varna laid down by the Brahmins. Some kings thought they were superior to the priest. Others felt that birth could not be a basis of deciding which Varna people belonged to. Besides, some people felt that there should be no differences amongst people based on the occupation. Others felt that everybody should be able to perform rituals, and others condemned the practice of untouchability. Also, there were many areas in the subcontinent, such as the Northeast, where social and economic differences were not very sharp and where the influence of the priest was limited. Why did people oppose the system of Varnas? So, let's see. The Varna system. Peoples are, were divided into four sets of groups on the basis of of the occupation and this was decided at the time of their birth itself so the first one is so the first one are the brahmins the second one we have kshatriyas or the rulers the fourth one vish or the vaishyas and then okay brahmin first kshatriya second third is vaishyas and the fourth one the fourth one are the sudras okay now painted Greyware. Plates and bowls are the most common vessels made out of painted greyware. So we have got this painted greyware. These are extremely fine to touch with a nice smooth surface. Perhaps these were used on special occasions for important people and to serve special food. Janapadas. The Rajas who performed these big sacrifices were now recognized as being Rajas of Janapadas rather than Jana. The word Janapada literally means the land where the Jana set its foot and settled down. Some important Janapadas are shown on map 4, page 57. So the Rajas who performed these big sacrifices were now recognized as being Rajas of Janapadas rather than Janas. The word Janapada literally means the land where the Jana set its foot and settled down. Some important Janapadas are shown on map 4. Page 57. Archaeologists have excavated a number of settlements in these Janapadas, such as Purana Kila in Delhi, Hastinapur near Merit, and Antran Jikhera near Ita, and the last two are in Uttar Pradesh. That is, Hastinapur near Merit is in Uttar Pradesh. Uttar Pradesh and a Tranjikhera near Ita is there near Uttar Pradesh. Is there in Uttar Pradesh? They found that people lived in huts and kept cattle as well as other animals. So the people there they lived in huts and they kept cattle as well as other animals. They also grew a variety of crops such as rice, wheat, barley, pulses, sugarcane, sesame and mustard. Is there a crop in this list that was not mentioned in chapter 4? I think it would be mustard, sugarcane, 
also no? they made earthen pots some of these were gray in color others were red they made earthen pots and they were gray in color and also red one special type of pottery found at these sites is known as painted greyware as is obvious from the name these gray pots had painted designs usually simple lines and geometric patterns now let's come to mahajanapadas about 2500 years ago some janapadas became more important than others and were known as mahajanapadas some of these are shown on map 4 Most Mahajanapadas had a capital city. Many of these were fortified. This means that huge walls of wood, brick or stone were built around them. So this is the map 4 and the important Janapadas, Mahajanapadas and cities. so this map shows us the janapadas mahajanapadas and cities forts were probably built because people were afraid of attacks from other kings other kings and needed protection it is also likely that some rulers wanted to show how rich and powerful they were they wanted to show how rich and powerful they were by building really large tall and impressive walls around their cities also in this way the land and the people living inside the fortified area could be controlled more easily land and the people living inside the fortified area could be controlled more easily by the king building such huge walls required a great deal of planning thousands if not lakhs of bricks or stone had to be prepared this in turn meant enormous labor provided possibly by thousands of men women and children and resources had to be found for all of these the fortification wall at kosambi this is a picture of remains of a wall made of brick found near present day alhabad uttar pradesh a part of it was probably built about 2500 years ago the new rajas now began maintaining armies soldiers were paid soldiers were paid regular salaries and maintained by the king throughout the year some payments were probably made using punched mark coins see the illustration on page 92 you will read more about these coins in chapter 9 list two ways in which the rajas of the mahajanapada were different from those mentioned in the rigveda now let's come to taxes as the rulers of the mahajanapada were were building huge forts were maintaining big armies they needed more resources and they needed officials to collect these so instead of depending on the occasional gifts brought by people as in the case of the raja of the janapadas they started collecting regular taxes okay 
As the rulers of the Mahajanapadas were building large forts, maintaining big armies, they needed more resources, and they needed officials to collect these. So instead of depending on occasional gift brought by people, as in the case of the Raja of the Janapadas, they started collecting regular taxes. These taxes on crops were the most important. This was because most people were farmers. Usually the tax was fixed at one by sixth of what was produced. This was known as bhaga or a share. Okay, one by sixth of the produced war was taxed and uh, this was taxed on crops. And uh, most of the people were farmers during that time. There were taxes on craftspersons as well. These could have been in the form of labor. For example, a weaver or a smith may have had to work for a day every month for the king. Herders were also expected to pay taxes in the form of animals and animal produce. There were also taxes on goods that were bought and sold through trade. And hunters and gatherers also had to provide forest produce to the Raja. So there are different forms of taxes. The first one is the taxes on crops were the most important. This was because most people were farmers. Usually the tax was fixed at one by sixth of what was produced. This was known as bhaga or a share. There were taxes on craftsperson as well. These could have been in the form of labor. For example, a weaver or a smith may have had to work for a day every month for the king. Herders. They were also expected to pay taxes in the form of animals and animal produce. There were also taxes on goods that were bought and sold and bought and sold through trade and hunters and gatherers also had to provide forest produce to the raja. What do you think would have been provided by hunters and gatherers? Now let's come to changes in agriculture. There were two major changes in agriculture around this time. One was the growing use of iron plowshares. This meant that heavy clayey soil could be turned over better than with a wooden plowshare so that more grain could be produced. And second, People began transplanting paddy. This meant that instead of scattering seed on the ground from which plants would sprout, saplings were grown and then planted in the fields. This led to increased production as many more plants survived. However, it was backbreaking work, generally slave men and women. Generally, slave men and women, dasas and dasis, and landless, land, landless agricultural laborers, kamakaras. So they are landless agricultural laborers are called kamakaras, had to do this work. Okay, so there were two major changes in agriculture. The first one is the use of iron plowshare and the second one is that people began transplanting paddy and this was a serious hard work. It was heartbreaking, means backbreaking work. So this was mainly done by slave men and women 
whom we call dasas and dasis and landless agricultural laborers so they are called kamakaras they had to do this work can you think why kings would encourage these changes because there will be more produce so more produce would mean more taxes a closer look magadha find magadha on map 4 page 57 magadha became the most important mahajanapada so here is magadha magadha is here Magadha became the most important Mahajanapada in about 200 years Many rivers such as the Ganga and Son flowed through Magadha This was important for transport water supplies for making the land fertile parts of magadha were forested elephants which lived in the forest could be captured and trained for the army forest also provided wood for building houses carts and chariots besides there were iron ore mines in the region that could be tapped to make strong tools and weapons okay so magadha became one of the most powerful or most important mahajanapada in about 200 years and rivers like ganga son flowed through magadha and uh, the flowing of the river is important because it is used for transport for water supplies for making the land fertile and also magadha area was forested and uh, they can use elephants uh, for uh, in the army they can capture them and train them and use them for the army and the forests were also there so from there they got wood which can be used for making houses carts and chariots and they had iron ore mines in the region that could be tapped to make strong tools and weapons magadha had two very powerful rulers okay magadha they had very powerful rulers two very powerful rulers the first one is bimbisara Bimbi Sara and the next is Ajata Sattu. So the first one is Bimbi Sara. Next one is Ajata Sattu, who used all possible means to conquer other Janapadas. Mahapadma Nanda was another important ruler. Mahapadma Nanda was another important ruler. he extended his control up to the northwest part of the continent raja griha present day rajgir in bihar was the capital of magadha for several years so raja griha which is present day rajgir which is in bihar was the capital of magadha for several years so raja griha this is raja griha and this is magadha later the capital was shifted to patliputra present day patna present day patna
more than 2300 years ago a ruler named alexander who lived in macedonia who lived in Macedonia in Europe wanted to become a world conqueror. Of course, he didn't conquer the world but did conquer parts of Egypt, parts of Egypt and West Asia and came to the Indian subcontinent reaching up to the banks of the Bias. When he wanted to march further eastwards, his soldiers refused. They were scared as they had heard about the Indian rulers had vast armies of foot soldiers, chariots and elephants. In what ways were these armies different from those described in the Rig Veda? A closer look, number B, Vaji. While Magadha became a powerful kingdom, Vaji, with its capital at Vaishali, Bihar, was under a different form of government known as Jana or Sangha. In a Jana or Sangha, there were not one but many rulers. Sometimes even when thousands of men ruled together, each one was known as a Raja. These Rajas performed rituals together. They also met in assemblies. They also met in assemblies and decided what had to be done and how through discussion and debate. For example, if they were attacked by an enemy, they met to discuss what should be done to meet the threat. However, women, dasas, that is the slave, and kamakaras, that is laneless farmers, however, women, Dasas, that is the slaves, and Kamakaras, that is landless agricultural laborers, could not participate in these assemblies. Both the Buddha and Mahavira, about whom we will read in chapter 7, belonged to Gana or Sanghas. So Gana, Gana is used for a group that has many members. Sangha means organization or association. Sangha, it means organization or association and Gana is used for a group that has many members. Some of the most vivid descriptions of life in the Sanghas can be found in Buddhist books. Keywords Raja, Ashwamedha, Varna, Janapada, Mahajanapada, Fortification, Army, Tax, Transplantation, Gana or Sangha, Democracy. This is an account of the Vajis from the Digha Nikaya, a famous Buddhist book. So Digha Nikaya, famous Buddhist book which contains some of the speeches of the Buddha. These were written about 2300 years ago. Ajata Sattu and the Vajis. Ajatasattu wanted to attack the Vajis. He sent his 
minister named Vasakara to the Buddha to get his advice on the matter. The Buddha asked whether the Vajis met frequently in full assemblies. When he heard that they did, he replied that the Vajis would continue to prosper as long as Number 1. They held full and frequent public assemblies. Number 2. They met and acted together. Number 3. They followed established rules. Number 5. They respected, supported and listened to elders. Number 5. Vajis women were not held by force or captured. Number 6. Jaitya's local shrines were maintained in both towns and villages. Next, why saints who followed different beliefs were respected and allowed to enter and leave the country freely? In what ways was the Vaji Sangha different from the other Mahajanapadas? Try and list at least three differences. Rajas of powerful kingdoms tried to conquer the Sanghas. Nevertheless, these lasted for a very long time, till about 1500 years ago, when the last of the Ganas or Sanghas were conquered by the Gupta rulers, about whom you will read in chapter 11. Elsewhere, okay, Gupta. The rulers. Find Greece and Athens in your atlas. Around 2500 years ago, the people of Athens set up a form of government which was called a democracy. So, democracy started in Greece, which lasted for about 200 years. Yes. All free men over the age of 30 were recognized as full citizens. There was an assembly that met at least 40 times a year to decide on important matters. All citizens could attend these meetings. Appointments for many positions were made through lottery. All those who wanted to be chosen gave in their names and then some were selected through lottery. Citizens were expected to serve in the army and the navy. However, women were not considered citizens. Also, many foreigners who lived and worked in Athens as merchants and craftspersons did not have right as citizens. Besides, there were several thousand slaves in Athens who worked in mines, fields, households and workshops. They too were not treated as citizens. Do you think this was a true democracy? Imagine, you are peeping through a crack in the wall of the assembly of Vaishali, where a meeting is in progress to discuss ways to deal with an attack by the king of Magadha. Describe what you might hear. So let's see the true and false. True or false. Okay, number A. Rajas who let the Ashwamedha horse pass through their land were invited to the sacrifice. True. The charioteer sprinkled sacred water on the priest. It's false. It, they are the priest. Priests sprinkled sacred water. Archaeologists have found palaces in the settlements of the Janapadas. They are not palaces, but they were huts. So it's false. Number D. Pots to store grain were made out of 
painted grey ware. No, it's not. Many cities in Mahajanapadas were fortified. It's true. Now let's see some important dates. New kinds of Rajas around 3000 years ago. Mahajanapadas about 2500 years ago. Alexander's invasion, composition of the Digha Nikaya about 2300 years ago. End of the Ganas or Sanghas about 1500 years ago. So that's all guys. Thank you. See you in my next video. Bye.